السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ عزب اللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دا ٹاپک فار ٹوڈے از دا پرپز بہائنڈ دا کابا دا پرپز بہائنڈ دی بلیک اسٹون ایٹ دا کابا اے لاٹ آف نان مسلمس اے لاٹ آف کرٹکس وانٹ ٹو کرٹیسائز اسلام اینڈ دے وانٹ ٹو سی دیٹ اسلام is a religion that uh, claims to be promoting Tawheed and the oneness of God. But what about the Kaaba? What about the black stone? Are, are Muslims not worshipping uh, a building? Uh, basically, they are, you know, everyone in the world is pointing towards a building. I remember myself a few years ago, I had a discussion with an atheist and he was uh, pointing this he was he was arguing that look you you say that you are uh, you know promoters of the oneness of god but why do you turn towards this one building in the world uh, why is everyone required to pray to, to that building so these are interesting questions that we come across when we are doing tabligh when we are preaching to our non muslim uh, friends brothers and sisters and we should try to understand the islamic position on these things So the first thing to understand regarding this is that the Kaaba itself is not an embellished building. For Muslims to be accused of worshipping the Kaaba and worshipping a building and thereby doing idol worship, we have to be embellishing the Kaaba in beautiful, you know, ornaments and, uh, you know, even the cloth that, put is, that is put on the Kaaba is totally black. There is no color in it. And for us to be, you know, uh, putting ornaments in there or putting statues in there, um, sculptures in there, that would accuse us, that could, you know, that could be a problem and that, that accusation would be more accurate that we are worshipping the Kaaba, but we are not. Um, another point to remember is that the Kaaba in the actual Salat that we offer is not even mentioned, not even once do we mention the Kaaba. So the Kaaba just represent a, represents a direction in which we pray. And uh, it is just meant to create harmony and unity among worldwide Muslims that, are all, they're, that they are all part of the same thing. And it also creates unity for humanity that they are all part of the same uh, species and the same beings created by the one God. It creates that oneness that would not have been achieved if there had been no single point towards which the Muslims turned for prayers. And uh, when we look at the Kaaba, it's a very simple building. It's a very cube shaped, very simple. There's nothing special about it. Uh, there are even videos on YouTube where people have taken videos from inside the Kaaba and there's nothing special in there either. And so we can come to understand that the Kaaba is uh, not meant to be an idol as some critics of Islam want to point out. You can even, there are videos on YouTube where people talk about, hey, the Kaaba uh, is, is, like a, is like an idol and Muslims are turning towards it. So it's nothing like that. It's, uh, the Kaaba is, uh, is a very simple building. We, we pray towards it just for the sake of direction. We don't even mention it in our Salat. And uh, it just gives us that sense of direction. And interestingly, direction is always associated with spiritual matters. Um, this has, has uh, you know, in the history of humankind, this has always been there. E even the Aboriginal peoples that I, I, I was once, um, I had a chance to research and look into some of them, and they talk about the four directions, for instance. So direction has that understanding that, you know, uh, you, you know, even in Christianity, we have, heaven is up the, uh, towards the sky and hell is towards the earth, that sense of direction, it doesn't mean that those things have to be taken literally. It just means that direction helps anchor us as human beings. We, we like to see things in terms of directions. Um, of course, in the broader sense, there is no up and down in the universe, you know, but just to give us that sense of right and wrong uh, and the right direction and the wrong direction and that kind of sense That is the purpose behind us praying towards the Kaaba. And what is more is that a lot of critics of Islam turn to, to, to the subject of the black stone. 
And they point out that, look, there's a black stone in the Kaaba. And what about that? And that that is just wrong. And, and uh, you know, Muslims claim that there's no idol worship. But what about this, this stone that they are uh, not only turning towards in prayer, but the stone to, that, that, is, that is kissed? You know, what is all that happening? Now, I would like to share with you today a quotation of the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, where he discusses this. And he talks about this. And uh, I, I'm going to show that to you right now. I see that some of you have uh, said salam, wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. And uh, thank you for confirming that uh, the uh, live stream is fine and uh, that you can, uh, you know, sometimes I get these error messages. I don't know why, uh, but thank you for letting me know. And uh, so, what uh, the subject I'm talking about is uh, about the black stone at the Kaaba. And I have a, a few more points to make. And in the meantime, I haven't seen any questions here, but if you if you would like to ask me any questions, this is an Ask an Imam. A, I'm a missionary, a murabbi in the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. You are welcome to uh, submit a question, and I, I would be happy to respond to you and to uh, to respond to your questions about Islam, about Ahmadiyya, about other re world religions, and uh, you know I can I can go from there. Now. Um, what I was talking about is a quotation of the Promised Messiah al-Islam. So let's head on over to the alislam.org website where this is discussed in the commentary of the Promised Messiah al-Islam. So let me show you the verse first. Uh, the verse of the Holy Quran, which I wanted to show you, is chapter 3, verse 98. It says, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, Fihi Ayatum Bayinatum Maqamu Ibrahim in it are manifest signs it is the place of abraham and whoso enters it enters peace and pilgrimage to the house is the is a duty which men those who can find a way thither owe to allah so this is talking about the pilgrimage to the kaaba which is in uh, in mecca in saudi arabia and uh, this is the Islamic uh, tenet. Uh, this is one of the pillars of Islam. So in commentary of this verse of the Holy Quran, the promised Messiah al Islam writes this. And what I did is I went to this verse and clicked on Urdu Tafasir. Uh, and this part is going to be in Urdu and English as well, but I will explain in English. Don't worry, I won't uh, speak in Urdu, but I will explain everything in, in English. Urdu Tafasir. So you click on that and uh, in this page comes up where in my browser, you can see on the right side, I have actually listed commentary uh, by Promised Messiah, Urdu taf Tafsir -e Sagir, Urdu by Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmed, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Haqqai Kul Furqan. I have listed all these and there are buttons available here for you to add these tafasir. So you can, you can jump between these different verses, uh, 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 between the commentaries of the same wor verse by different um, uh, you know, uh, tafasir. So you can just jump back and forth. The, it says here, Tafsir Kabir, this chapter in this volume is not available. So you can see here that it's not there, but uh, if there are other verses, then it's available. So here, the promised Messiah, uh, peace be upon him, uh, talks about uh, Hajj and talks about the, the Kaaba. And you can see here, there's a verse and there's a commentary. And the page that I'm trying to go to, it comes later. Uh, there it is. So it says here, the promised Messiah Islam, talks about the, the stone, the black stone. And I'm going to read this in Urdu and then I'll explain it in English. The Prophet Messiah Islam says, Khana Kaaba ka patthar, yani hajre aswad ek ruhani amar ke liye namuna kaim kiya gaya hai. Agar khuda ta'ala chahta, to khana kaaba banata, na khana kaaba banata, or na usme hajre aswad rakta. Lekin chunki uski adat hai ki ruhani umur ke mukabil par jismani umur bhi namune ke tawar par pada kar deta hai, ta wo ruhani umur par dilalat kare. Isi adat ke muafik khana kaaba ki bunyad dali gai. اصل بات یہ ہے کہ انسان عبادت کے لیے پیدا کیا گیا ہے اور عبادت دو قسم کی ہے ایک تزلل اور انکسار دوسری محبت اور عصار so I'm not going to read through the whole long quotation but just uh, to give you an idea of what he's arguing here he says that when it comes to the the black stone and the khana kaaba these are meant to create a spiritual condition the, these have a spiritual purpose 
behind them and they if, if god almighty wanted he would not have created the khana kaaba he would not have created the the black stone in it but it is meant to create that spiritual atmosphere it has spiritual goals both the kaaba and the black stone and what happens is that for our spiritual condition we need physical uh, you know parallel uh, things that are related to it so that our spirituality can improve without the physical aspect of worship our spiritual aspect cannot improve and uh, so the same thing is happening with the khana kaaba the same thing is happening with the black stone that human beings have been created of course for worship and worship the promised messiah islam talks about and this is very important he says worship is there for two reasons one is for creating uh, that humility in human beings and the second is to express love compassion uh, you know that is so these are two aspects of worship that are very important one is humility and the other is love and when it comes to humility we have the salat we prostrate we bow down we prostrate we bow down and we do all those postures that are meant to create that humility when we put our head on the ground it is meant to create that humility within us and even in this case uh you know uh when we put our head on the ground we're not worshiping the ground we're not worshiping any objects that might be sitting there might be a chair in front of us there might be something else in front of us we're not worshiping those things but it is meant to create that humility we are worshiping allah and the same thing is that when it comes to the kaaba uh you know this is the same thing and and let's go back to that uh, quotation of the promised messiah peace be upon him um that he says that you know if physical conditions have an impact on our spiritual conditions so if for instance if a person starts laughing for no reason he will start to uh, you know uh, actually laugh and actually feel happy you know they they say laughter is the best medicine the idea is that if you laugh even for no reason it will start to make you feel better and the same thing is that if you start crying for no reason or artificially just trying to, trying to cry it will bring tears to your eyes and you will start actually crying so the physical body and its actions have an impact on our spiritual emotional uh, state and um, so when when it is proven that that worship is like this that there is humility in it and the physical postures have an impact on our spiritual uh, condition so the same thing uh, happens when we have worship for for love and uh, for sacrifice when uh, worship is also meant to teach us love and sacrifice worship is a means of expressing love and sacrifice and that's where the the the, the whole pilgrimage and going to the kaaba and all that spiritual atmosphere uh, that is created in the kaaba that we are just you know when we go there we don't even care about our how we look is just white clothing that we wear uh, you know like a shroud that we are covered in at at the time of our death and then you know it's an expression of love that you know you don't care you just start moving around and you you are you know it's 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 a it's a love expression of that love that we have for god almighty that we just start going around like this in in circles and and and, and you know uh shaving the head and all those things are aspects of love that we express at the time of the pilgrimage and one of those aspects of love is kissing you know you know you, you love your child you love your baby one of the ways the common the most common ways you express that love is by kissing that baby so god almighty know, knowing the human nature and how it has this desire to express his love in that you know uh, physical sense as well but by kissing god put that stone there as well which we kiss you know just as as to help us with that expression it's a it's a symbolic act to impact our spiritual nature this is not that stone is meaningless we are not worshiping the stone we don't consider that an idol we, it has no meaning uh, we are kissing the stone to express uh, that love and compassion that we have and all these things are just just expressions of love Uh, for god almighty and that's what the that's what the whole purpose behind the kaaba is a lot of non muslims come to us 
and they start accusing us. I even went to an, a museum once and saw that, uh, you know, it, it was a place of worship for with a lot of idols. And they actually gave this example that, look, Muslims also have a, a, a place which towards which a building towards which they pray. And so they shouldn't accuse us of doing anything wrong with our idols. But it, there's a world of a difference between the Kaaba and other idols. Other idols are, you know, sculptures and they have shapes and they have different sizes and people are literally bowing down to those idols wherever those idols are. If you pick up that idol from one place and move it to another place, if you pick up that idol and move it from one house to another house, people worship the idol. But in the case of Islam, we're not worshiping the idol. We are uh, we are just using the, the couple of things, very small things, as a symbol towards which we turn. And it has nothing to do with our worship to that item. We are just using that um, at, at, to get that direction and to ex to show our, our, our love for these things. And the Promised Messiah al Islam talked, talks about this uh, in his commentary of this verse. And I've already shared the way to get to that commentary. It's basically in the third volume. If you can read Urdu, you can find this commentary in the third volume of Tafsir of the Promised Messiah, peace be upon him, commentary of the Promised Messiah. And uh, the page number is 183. 183 and 184 are the two pages on which you can find this commentary by the Promised Messiah, peace be upon him. So there you go. That's the reasoning and purpose behind the, the black stone at the Kaaba in Mecca in Saudi Arabia. So if there are any questions, you can, uh, you are welcome to submit them. I see uh, some of you have already submitted some questions. So let me take up those questions now. Tala is asking, what is the wisdom of choosing the Kaaba at that particular place? Most sacred places of God are in the Middle East. Why not in the Western world? Um, when it comes to the Kaaba, actually, this is a good question. Um, and recently, I came across a writing of Hazrat Muslim Aud, the second Khalifa of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. Radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him. He talks about how the Kaaba has been strategically chosen by God Almighty uh, as, as, as the place toward which we worship because it's in the middle of a desert and it's basically in the middle of nowhere. And the idea is that when we go there, we only go for, worldly, for, for spiritual reasons and there's no worldly reason to, to draw us towards that. If it's, the Kaaba had been in the middle of a scenic place like Kashmir or some other Switzerland or that kind of place where people can just flock over there as tourists, then there's a lot of worldly purpose behind going towards the Kaaba. But the Kaaba has been placed in the middle of a desert so that our entire journey, the entire purpose of going to the Kaaba would be only for spiritual reasons and no other reasons that we only take on this journey because we want to express our love for God. We want to worship God in the best possible manner. So that is the spiritual reason uh, the rationale behind choosing the Kaaba in such a place like that. And the reason why w there are a lot of uh, prophets who came in the Middle East is because their lineage goes all the way back to, the, to Abraham. And Abraham is the one, again, connected with the Kaaba and I already gave you the reason why the Kaaba was chosen. And then Ka uh, Abraham is also the father of Isaac and Ishmael. And their story is very important throughout the history of religion. And that story is important. That's why uh, scholars sometimes call Islam, Christianity, and Judaism as Abrahamic religions, because Abraham is in the center of many of their uh, our, our stories. And because of that, um, you know, because he was in the Middle East, a lot of history developed from there, and then uh, from the children of, from the children of Abraham and Isaac, there were a lot of prophets who came, and because of that, again, this is I, I keep saying because is because the, all these things are linked to each other. Because of that, there's a lot of discussion of the Middle Eastern prophets, 
But that doesn't mean profits did not come in Australia, for instance. That doesn't mean that profits did not come in Russia. That doesn't mean that profits did not come in, in Africa, in Europe, in, in North America, in South America. In fact, there is evidence to point out that there have been profits among them, but they were very ancient and they were from times when they were more, there was more, more, more reliance on oral tradition. And so that, that's a matter of research. Uh, when it comes to today, the broadly speaking, the majority of the world's population is part of the Abrahamic stream of religion. That includes Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And so because that's we see it from that perspective, that's why we, we feel that there are, there's no talk about anyone else, but there are a whole number of prophets. There's evidence of that in South America, in North America, and everywhere. Uh, the Quran is very clear on this. It says, had For every nation, there was a guide. And so everyone uh, had, uh, had uh, you know, had, had, had a guide, had prophets come to them. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, the, the focus is on Middle East because it has the lineage with Abraham and some important examples were given from there. But that doesn't mean that other parts of the world did not have prophets. Um, Abdul Shakur is saying, why is there no gender segregation at the time of Hajj, unlike other times in prayers? I would say that, uh, you know, partly because it is meant to be that special kind of worship where, uh, you know, you are just lost in the love of Allah and you would not pay any attention towards anything else uh, like gender segregation and those things. And because you're doing it once in a lifetime, you know, as compared to the prayer where you are going to the same mosque on a daily basis and the same uh, families and the same persons and the same men and women from the same area, from the same neighborhood are going there over and over. So it's better to keep that segregation, especially to prevent, uh, you know, distraction for young people who know uh, you know, the families that are living in that neighborhood who are coming to the mosque and, you know, that segregation becomes more important in that in those circumstances. And then when it comes to the Kaaba, you know, people are coming from all over the world. And so, and they're in the middle of a travel and there's, it's a very hard kind of traveling. And so it's, it, you know, that, that kind of uh, strictness is not required. Of course, we do that because that's how the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. And we follow him however he did things in, uh, in, in religion. There are certain things that are done in a certain way, certain things that are not done in a certain way. And that's okay. Um, even in times of war, the wives of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, used to act as nurses, giving water, uh, treating the wounds of uh, the, uh, the injured. And, you know, that's something that they wouldn't be normally doing that going to these different men and giving them water and other things. But in, in, in a time of war, that did happen. So we have to understand the circumstances and the context in which certain things are done, being done. When it comes to the Hajj, the, it's, there, there's a certain context in it. Also, logistically, creating a segregated space in the Kaaba would just make it very, very difficult. Uh, for for men and women to adjust and who you know the only way I can think of of course they cannot demarcate the circles or circuits around the Kaaba for men and women but they can maybe assign times but if they assign times then they are separating the men and women who are traveling maybe perhaps together and you are creating that chaos and making it much much more difficult so I would think about it uh, from a logistical point of view uh, also that it's not possible in that environment where each person just has to do these seven circuits anyways and after that they have to leave uh, to, to create that difficulty for them uh, is not uh, possible so you know that's one of the reasons why we have that kind we don't have that kind of segregation at the Kaaba in the time of the Hajj or in the time of Umrah if all prophets preached oneness of Allah why are there not more historical records or artifacts with such a slogan written over and over? There is 
there is significant his, there are significant historical records in um, uh, you know and you can find these records uh, among uh, uh, you know uh, the followers of all religions you can find uh, Judaism for sure you have the Torah you have the Bible you can definitely find Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 in the, even in the New Testament in the words of Jesus you can find it in Mark chapter 12 verses 28 to 30 the oneness of Allah is talked about even in uh, in the teachings of Aboriginal peoples, you can go and meet their elders, ask them how many gods there are, who is the creator, and they will mention one creator. All of them, all of them will talk about one creator, one uh, being who is the source of everything. And uh, the, you can, uh, Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmed Rahmala Ta'ala talked about the Aborigines in Australia who talk about the one creator. So there is evidence everywhere actually. Um, and uh, once we dig into these uh, different uh, religions, we find this. And from a Muslim perspective, the, the, what is lacking is the Muslim perspective on these things. The researchers of most of, the, of most of this are either Christians or atheists. So Muslims have to step up and start researching and start going into these histories and archaeology and all that and finding that evidence um, and, and, and presenting it to the world. It's just a, a matter of time, inshallah. We will, uh, dis we will find it and we will discuss it.